welcome you again for another Toll Warcast. This is episode 21. I'm your host Daily, reporting, well, almost live from Snowtops Norway, and we are here yet again. After, well, a little vacation on my part after the last one. Um, there's a good reason for that, but uh, I'll get to into that after I introduced our guest today, um, which is Legio. Yes, good morning. I'm very pleased to be here. Yes, Legio. So Legio is probably one of well, one of the most known people around TWC, maybe? I'm not sure. We can call you that. You are quite known, it feel, I feel like. Um, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps. People like you, at least. So, be, be, me and Lego like are going to do... Too. Sorry, what did you say? I like them, too. That's very good. Very good, indeed. I like them, too, as well. Uh, so today we're actually going to do a quite a filled show. We're going to do the first one is actually going to be dedicated to the long relaunch of the Minecraft server here on TWC. We're going to talk a lot about that. I'm also going to do a quite a ton of pictures now. So me and Lego are have taken different pictures and we're going to post them in the video. So keep an eye out on that so you can check it out. It's of the safe zone where you spawn so you have something to look at while you listen to us chatter on. So, um, yeah, well, we can start with that, can we, uh, Legio? Start with the Minecraft server. Yes, well, about a week or maybe a week and a half ago, we launched uh, the new Minecraft player versus player server on the 1.31 Minecraft patch. It was, um, it was very interesting because at first there were a lot of bugs and the server crashed a bit. There was, there was a lot of lag and things like that. And many bugs mm. players would get stuck in blocks. I myself got stuck in blocks several times. And then the wa- and the water was sludge and it drowned you. Yes, everything drowned you. Even you could suffocate in um in the air. There was a lot of the death. Unfor- <laughs> very unfortunate deaths. Yes, but- and that would be a horrible world to live in, to be honest. <laughs> everything it would be. be. But yeah. fortunately, we have an excellent gaming staff spearheaded by Green Eyed Devil, Ramlap, Mangerman, Poach, and others, um, who are both admins and moderators on the Minecraft server, have been working day and night to get us a relaunch of the server. And we had a test server in the interim, which was which was also interesting. It's a small world, and it's very player versus player oriented. That is to say, factions weren't really created. People just bunched together and attacked each other without mercy. It was really fun. Yes, it was. We we took a fort from um, Inglorious Thomas on Total War Center. Yes. Glory. Glory. Glory yes. to the Brotherhood. Oh, However... Don't that. However, don't stop with that, mate. We are now... Um, the new server has been relaunched. And I'm going to read the change log to you. And there, there are many... Um, um, they're actually very good changes, honestly, from the previous server. Which was very fun to play as, but there were some things that needed tweaking, perhaps. Mm-hmm. So first of all, there are the factions, which now, um, to claim a chunk, a chunk is a large tract of territory that you claim in Minecraft, and only members of your faction may build or destroy things on it, unless, of course, they're at war with you. And previously, a chunk cost 2,000 in-game bits of currency, but now it costs 1,000. And previously, if you you could you could unclaim a chunk of land as well, and you'd get a refund of twelve hundred um, in-game currencies. And how, now, however, you get zero. So if you claim territory, you're um, pretty much stuck with it. Yes. Um, there's also a manpower system. Uh, each faction starts out with a set amount of manpower. Let's say, for the purposes of this warcast, that it's about one hundred and fifty. And each time a player of your faction dies, that you lose a an amount of manpower and it and it decreases so let's say um daily is slain so his faction the northmen lose 10 points getting this to 100 to 140 now this has been increased to 15 points yeah, yeah. so that because if you get below a certain threshold of your manpower points then uh, your enemy factions can actually do more damage to your land. They can claim the land for you. They can take your things. And uh, generally, you'll lose a lot of uh, server prestige. People will be less likely to ally with you, for instance. Yes, if you lose a big war, people won't like you that much. It's a cool world. It is very cool. And also factions. Previ- in the previous server, we had, made, uh, we had a proliferation of factions with about 
two or three members, and then these factions would uh, disband very quickly and create a new faction. This can no longer happen because factions with less than three members can no longer declare war or have war declared on them, so they can't really get into the player versus player aspect of it at all. Which kind of defeats the purpose since it's a since it is a player versus player server. Exactly. Also, chunks of land can no longer be unclaimed during war. Unclaiming a chunk during war was an exploit and it's been dealt with appropriately. Hmm. Well, want me to take a uh, lead now, or we want to keep on going? Um, you can take take the next bit. Okay. So shops, uh, there is a economy system, which of course, which you talked about, that the chunk claims cost, you know, a thousand. Uh, there is a dollar system for the economy system, and basically, you get money from mining in mines for example you mine a stone you get a set amount of dollars for it and if you mine a diamond you get a set amount of more uh, more money based on how rare that item is for example diamond you get a lot from than stone um you can actually set up shops in this uh, in this world uh, for trading for example that you have uh, harvested a lot of bricks which is of course a commodity uh, for building in Minecraft. And you can sell that for money, which allows you to either claim more land or for example, build, um, buy something else, for example, diamond, if you're not a very heavy miner. Uh, these things actually open up uh, trade factions, which we actually have present on the server, uh, people who actually devote themselves on becoming huge producers of stuff that people need, but doesn't really have the patience to mine for themselves. So yeah. Um, so that's that's the shop. But at least the change that was changes this time around with shops is that before uh, shop signs did uh, you know the shops didn't decay. You know you can have a shop whenever, but shop signs will now break when a shop no longer has any of the product it is selling in in its chest. For example, a chest where it used to be bread uh, will no longer will be able to be opened and uh you know looted for example if it's the, the product that you're selling if it's not in there so yeah um next the world has actually changed uh world type is set to large biomass which means that there's going to be a huge instead of you know the smaller one which we had you're not going to walk you know 100 blocks and then you come to a desert <laughs> and then you come to a snowy biome no it's going to be more very much larger which may gives you a little bit more of a you know continental size, so which is nice. Uh, world size is actually lowered a lot now, so we're gonna have a lot more a cluster of kingdoms, which is good for PvPing, and also there is now no more um, what you call it? portals. The portal system User has been. your channel timed out. That is not good. Lego has disconnected. Well, anyhow, I'm gonna keep going until it comes back. Now this feels weird. I'm used to talking to myself, but now he really left. It's gonna be really awkward. So and <laughs> weird. Okay, well at least what they did was that they changed the uh, world size so that it will be easier for um, factions to war each other by walking. And of course the portal system was abused to no end, so they removed that. So yeah, and the nether and the end are accessible as they say here. I'm not sure about the end. I think they removed it like, after they... Um, stress tested the server but i'm not sure about that we'll see also there are restrictions on enchanting uh power one user one entered your channel hello yes yes i'm i'm uh, very I'm sorry I, re I, I had a very um i had an internet fluctuation it's quite all right lego i still continue do you want to continue from enchanting from for me um yes did you cover enchanting no, I covered the world. I want you to cover enchanting. Okay. Well, one thing that became very... Um, it wasn't very pleasant in the late game on the previous iteration of the server was that by about two weeks in, you had factions walking around in heavily enchanted diamond armor with insanely powerful swords and bows. And even with the most powerful weapons, you could hardly make a dent in other factions because they were wearing such unbelievably thick diamond armor. And so, um, eventually, many enchantments were banned because they were overpowered, and battles would last well over 15 minutes. You'd just be clicking at each other randomly, and nothing would happen. So now, however, um, they have allowed some enchantments, which are including on bows, power 1 or 2. This gives a slight knockback. Blast protection, feather falling, respiration, and aqua affinity on armor. 
Blast protection protects you from um, TNT blast, creeper explosions, feather falling, if so that you don't, if you fall, for instance, as I did earlier today, you won't take as much damage as you would have. Respiration lets you run faster, and aqua affinity lets you travel through the water more quickly. On swords, you have smite, which um, adds a, da a small damage counter to your swords. Bane of arthropods allows you to do more damage to spiders, which are very annoying. I dislike spiders most, the most. Yes. And looting, which I, which I think gives you a slightly more, ch um, a slightly greater chance of obtaining better gear. No, it's yeah, it's it's. I think it's that they drop more. I think maybe. Yes. Um, creatures that you kill, not other players. Drop more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you kill a player, he drops everything. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, fortune has been restricted. Mm hmm Yes. What was fortune again? Was it that you got like three diamonds out of one ore? Pretty much. Um, you had more chances of of encountering rare ores. Okay. So yeah. Uh yeah, and uh, I think that what would uh, smite well, is against zombies and uh, skeletons, wasn't it? On swords. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, alchemy. Okay, so alchemy is yeah, fire protection. All varieties are allowed. All other potions are restricted. Easy as that, and that's the change log basically. Apart, apart from several um, joke changes, which have, which have been included for the benefit of the community. Yes, which is you know you have to know. Yeah, like Benz, you have to know who Benz is, and then you have to know who, what the brother is, a brotherhood is, and then you have to know that the moderator and admins have a spawn rate of diamonds. Uh, on they had a seventeen per hour, but now it's nine per hour, so that's good to know. Uh, I will leave a lot of links. They will also, like I said, there's gonna be uh, pictures in. The, I'm gonna also render it in HD, so you can watch it at that. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, check it out. Uh, that's a safe zone pictures and all that. Uh, also gonna add a lot of links so how to join there's gonna be a rich how you join the server is quite easy all you have to do is be a member of the um, of the forums and then you have to write in this thread which I'm gonna post uh, directly in the, the description and on the like the official total workcast thread inside um, on the TW center uh, so it's basically you just write your minecraft name in there and you'll get whitelisted as soon as possible which is quite quick also, I'm going to link to a lot of relevant wiki pages and um, yeah, like for example, server rules, server guide, server plugins and the kingdoms list because we have a lot of special kingdoms and you have to find your niche and the people you like. So yeah, that's actually it for Minecraft. Is there anything more you want to add, Legio? Um, yes, if you intend to join the Minecraft forums, then be warned that cheating is not tolerated. Yeah, and we and it terms of service uh, so do uh, exist. It's the same rules as on the server as on the Minecraft server. So you don't insult people, you don't act bad. Of course, we have you know we have fine trolling, subtle trolling. You know we, uh, uh, what you call it? We not uh, we don't offend people, but we spite people. I think that's a good word, isn't it? Um, I believe so, yes. Spite people, yes. So, just be careful that this is this is indeed a... There are restrictions on the server that might not be what you used to, but that actually improves the community server a lot, so trust me in that. But is there anything more, Lego? Um, no, I think that's all. I hope everyone who is listening will enjoy the server and join it soon. Yes. Join us for glory. Death. Yes. Uh, next one, we're going to actually move into the news bucket, which is actually, well, the segment for news. So, Legio, you're actually going to kick it off uh, since you are quite, what you call it, excited for War of the Roses. Yes, I am. I'm actually very excited about the War of the Roses because the period in time has always been very fascinating to me. It's, um, it's the period of intermittent, intermittent warfare between 1455 and 1485. It started after England had been thrown into relative, I wouldn't say chaos, because there wasn't really anything unfortunate happening on English soil as a result of the Hundred Years' War and its loss. It was mainly France's loss there. Mm. However, um, 
because England was um, because of France's victory in the war of, in in the Hundred Years' War, there was some discontent among the nobles and perhaps even among the people and the newly emergent merchant class. And in 1450, there was a revolt in London itself, the Kent. Actually, in Kent, forgive me. There was a revolt in Kent, and royal officials were killed. There was also some sporadic violence in London. And Henry VI, the king, he was... He was completely... I wouldn't say completely inept, but he was a bit inept as an administrator. He, he perhaps would have been a better king in a different age. Hmm. And, of course, you had all the great battles, such as Barnet, St. Albans, and... Um, Accommodating in. <laughs> uh, just go. <laughs> it's quite all right. You've done good. D did you read that uh, without the uh, notes? Uh, yes, I took an advanced course in English history, which is why I said for forgetting it. Okay, fine. Uh, we we try to keep. Uh, yeah. Uh, culminating in the Battle of Bosworth Field, which uh, which if any of the listeners are thespians or enjoy the works of Shakespeare will remember as the, one of the final acts in, in his play Richard III. Richard III being the last Yorkist king. Of course there were two factions, the Yorks and the Lancasters. The Yorks had a white rose and the Lancasters had a red rose, which is a very oversimplified explanation, but I think it'll suffice. Especially when it comes to the gameplay because while it focuses on the history very, it focuses on the history it is a purely multiplayer um, team deathmatch or objective-oriented battle. You have approximately 64 players a battle, which some some people have been disappointed of because in Mountain Blade, for instance, which is made by Paradox as well, or published, rather, you can have absolutely enormous battles. But in this, there will be slightly better graphics than in Warbander with fire and sword, so I suppose there's that limitation. Mm, and there will be a lot of blood. Oh yes, you'll have amazing uh, weapons and armor. I, for instance, cannot wait to have a billhook or, or a halberd and start smashing my way through everything. Um, you can actually pre-order the game Wars of the Roses on Steam or Gamersgate or any other website. If you pre-order from Steam, for instance, you get a House of Lancaster special edition premium content, some coats of arms to customize your armor. You can customize your armor you get a sword and some heraldic devices. If you pre-order from anywhere else, however, I think you'll get the House of York edition, which is pretty much the same, but the coats of arms given to you are from the House of York. That is to say, Richard's side. Yeah, so it's not, you don't get any, any, you know, content from the game, you know, which is relevant. It's just pimping out your guy, basically. Yes, and it is things that you can unlock by playing the game anyway. You just, you just gain access to them slightly earlier than other people. You also get um, the soundtrack. Nice. Okay. Very good. Very good. I, I'm actually looking forward to this because I love, you know, uh, Mountain Blade Warband is one of my play most played games ever. You know, I still play Napoleonic Wars every week, you know, keeping it up. Uh, even though I'm getting, getting a little bit tired of it, but it's still a lot of fun. So I hope that War of the Roses will bring something of the same back. So yeah, is there anything more you want to add with it? Um, no, not really. Okay, okay, fine. Very good, very good. I'm quite impressed, you know. You <laughs> Gee, yeah, that was a lot of stuff. Damn, I don't have... I feel like embarrassed now because I don't really have that much information. I'm not going to talk about that interesting game either. <laughs> uh, but, yes. Um, what I'm going to talk about, what, one game that I actually bought recently is actually Counter-Strike Global Offensive. If it's that what it's called? It should be, yes. Yes, Global Offensive. The new Counter-Strike game is out, and um, for you who haven't played it or doesn't know about it, it's actually a uh, the new iteration of, you know, the Counter-Strike series, the old one from, you know, you had one point, you know, yeah, you had Counter-Strike which came out around with Half-Life and it was just uh, like an experiment and actually turned out, well, a huge success. And it's still played to this day as, you know, in esports and stuff like that. And I even play it sometimes. So it's uh, quite a lot of fun. So the recently they actually released the newest one was uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which, you know, it's coming out for console, it's coming out for, you know, uh, Windows, and it's coming out for Mac, I think. And they're trying to really, like, reach out. And you get that feeling, though, that it's a little bit console but still, you still get a good feeling on uh, PC. 
and they added just about uh, just about the right stuff so that it doesn't you know feel bad at all it actually feels quite good so that's that's a good feeling so i probably might actually get into the you know the clan matches and all that again because i was heavy on that when i was a little bit younger uh you know rushing and throwing flashbangs and blowing people head off it's always fun it's always fun i hear that the terrorists have an interesting new form of clothing themselves yeah like i said to you on steam yesterday so they look like skater punks <laughs> So it's uh, I don't I'm sure I like it I can't even tell the difference between the terrorists and the counter terrorists at this point but uh, it's some of the um, some of the and you can't even choose your type it seems you just are picked with one so you have like suddenly fifteen clones of the same you know IGNS or uh, SAS guy so it's, it's kind of stupid I really like the idea that you could actually pick your own you know of five people you can actually pick your own guy I always went with elite for the terrorists i'm already missing that guy with the green jacket and glasses <sighs> but yeah nostalgia it's always good oh, actually as a matter of fact i i just opened my steam page and uh, as a benefit of pre-ordering wars of the roses i now have access to the beta which is very in which i am very pleased with the global offensive Con oh you oh you got the war of the roses beta Yes. Ah, oh, congrats, mate. Congrats. Yeah. Actually, I got uh, I got um, access to Counter Strike Global Offensive beta. Actually, when I pre-ordered, so it's actually nice to play the game before. But of course, there was no difference between the beta and the launch because it was a couple of days before. But <laughs> yeah, it's always nice to get that little extra. But at well, least the full the full game is released on October second, if I remember correctly. So this is over a month. Yeah, well that's good. You can give feed feedback to the um, publishers or developers what they should do different if they do something wrong. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and you with the history, you should really, you know, because the games are not usually historically accurate, so you could really burn them on that. I intend yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, next up is Battlefield 3 Armored Combat. It's actually coming out soon, so basically the new DLC for, yeah, I can't really believe I'm saying this, but DLC for Battlefield 3 is coming out. It's going to be very focused on different kind of vehicles. There's going to be a lot of tanks, you know, big, big, massive maps, which is, you know, what Battlefield 3 is about. And we're going to have a lot of choppers as well, and I, god damn it, I hate choppers. Ugh. Do you play Battlefield 3, Legio? Um, I haven't played any of the Battlefield games, really. Okay, what first-person shooters do you play? I don't play any. I know. Okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not judging you. Well, what do you play? Strategy? Um, I mainly play role-playing games, um, perhaps. And are, yes, role-playing games like Fallout, Oblivion, Mass Effect, things like that. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm not gonna judge you. I like FPSs because they're like easy, fun. You just go in and then you blow people up, basically, and that's it. There's nothing else. But yeah, <laughs> but at least uh, DLC Armored Combat coming out soon. Keep uh, if you're interested in it. And also, yeah, we can also talk about that. The Battlefield Three official TWC clan is a go, at least for PC, and it, it it's for everything. It's for uh, PlayStation Three, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and PC. Get in there, join up, and get to start start talk to people. You can actually we can actually get some, you know, <laughs> games up and running, which would be awesome. I'm gonna leave a link, of course, to that as well in the um, yeah, in the thread and in the description. So keep a look out for that. Also, uh, next up on the line, do you... two seconds. Let's see. Sorry. I was uh, losing a little bit mic control there. Okay, so uh, I got a little trailer for all of you, which is Splendid Prohibition, Omerta City of Gangsters. Uh, basically, this game is like Gangsters 2, 1 and 2. I don't know if you... Have you played them, Gunny? I am... Um, Legio? No. You have not. Okay, basically it's like a overview map and you are a gangster, which is setting up, you know, different moonshining business and you know racketeering and you have to you have a set goal 
for eliminating you know the gangsters in the town or you know saving that person or whatever you it's very fun and it seems that there's something similar coming out now it's um it's already had a trailer so that's nice and uh, i'm gonna post a link in there so check it out it, uh, it doesn't have that good of a graphics but it seems that if they make the gameplay you know good enough as they did with uh gangsters it would be awesome if uh it would be something similar because i love those uh, games so yeah um next up PC Gamer has released some dishonored screenshots, you know, so it shows off some nice words, gun and, you know, masks, <laughs> which are quite cool. Um, I'm going to post them in, you know, in the video as well as in the description and thread. So you can, you know, click on the video right now and check it out. It's actually uh, looking quite cool. I love, you know, the detail that some of it, even though the graphics, you know, aren't top up tier, they really made, you know, the whole... Uh, feeling of the game, you know, the whole foundation of it really cool and I can't, I'm really looking forward to the game. So am I. Yeah, you're gonna get it, maybe? Perhaps if I can find the money for it, yes. <laughs> Sell your body. <laughs> no. No, okay, fine. Well, then I can't help you. That's my best advice. Uh, so yeah, so that's looking good. So, yes, let's see. Yes, and also I'm gonna post a little link to a nice article on Rock Paper Shotgun going through the several bits of game and, you know, he, the, the author ponders some things and he also throws some sentences around with uh, the co-lead, Raf Colan, what, Colantonio. Um, and they have a nice conversation and you get, you know, some vibe of the game and what they actually had as a... Um, what they wanted with the game and all that so check it out read up on it if you're interested in Dishonored I am certainly and I enjoyed the article immensely so yeah but but Legio we are actually gonna move into another news now which is uh, you know kind of funny and at the same time a little bit rage worthy so you want to kick it off um, yes, according to a figure which a publisher and game company UbiSoft seemingly pulled out of the limitless cavities of its anus, um, that 95% of 95% of video games are pirated, which I I don't exactly know where to begin with this. It's I don't even know where they got the numbers, we, we and they don't. Even... Let's I don't think they know either. They have been. Hmm. They haven't really had the best track record when it comes to say, um, DRM and having to be online at all times to play the game, and things like that. Yeah. So it isn't exactly. It's unsurprising, but it's still very unfortunate to hear this from them. And a lot of a lot of posters on Total War Center and even people around the street who are into gaming are refusing to buy Assassin's Creed Three, for instance, because of this. Um, this completely disrespectful attitude towards gamers and the numbers are completely they're falsified to say the least they don't mm. yes well you can't say that okay that's just silly because you have a set of percentage of people buying a game and you can say that okay fine you have a certain amount of people that will always you know pirate no matter what they are pirates no matter what they will do not pay for a video game uh, but then you have the guys, you know, people who doesn't, you know, who doesn't pirate, you know, they don't really have the know-how, they don't really, you know, they don't really know about it that much. It's not in their culture, for example. And they, you know, they don't. That's the large of the, you know, market does that. It's a, I think it's a large portion now that actually do pirate, but I think the, they're still, <laughs> like, they're far from outweighing the, the market that's actually buying it. So I think the it's kind of silly actually saying something like that. Ninety five percent of people pirate their games, and the worst thing that they don't have any you know any sources. They don't have any information about it. They just pull this out of their magic hat. Yes, and, and another thing is that a pirated game does not necessarily indicate a lost sale because um, there have been many instances that I've read of on the internet, not on Total War Center, of course, because discuss promoting legal activities is not allowed there, and I'm a moderator. But um, there have been documented cases of gamers trying a game out, so to speak, with the lack of a demo, for instance. They pirate the game, and then they purchase it, which equates to a sale for the company. Yeah, but, yeah, but we can't really, you know, that's a, I promise you that's a small majority of 
the pirates actually some of them actually have morals but most of them don't they don't either you have, okay what's well, something i like we, we're not gonna go into the pirate thing what's right and what's wrong but i think that if you if you do not have access any way of getting the game in where you are or you are very 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 poor and the only you know good thing you have in life is gaming pirate that's that's the only you know only extreme case i can see that this it's actually good to pirate so but uh, you see of course the people who does does it because you know why not you you won't get caught especially in you know here where i live it's not really a repercussion if you download a for example a movie here in norway you don't really get any repercussions for it at all well so. for, well there have there are well ubi soft may have a slight point i think their numbers are very exaggerated for instance i recently read an article in which it was sta in which it was completely sourced by um gog.com which um you may recognize as involved with the witcher 2 assassins of kings an overall excellent game and is one of the most pirated games of all time actually and the thing about it is that the pirated version has drm and in order to play it you have to deactivate it first after pirating so this gives you a lot of extra steps to take however there is a, a purchasable version without drm and there's even if you purchase the game once you get a free copy without drm so you, you pretty much get two games for the price of one and it's interesting because well it shows that sometimes pirates will take the hard way to play a game because it means pirating and while yeah, ubi yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes it's i i don't think it's uh, as, it's as big as a, as big of a deal as ubi soft says no but, but sometimes still, yeah. there are people who will pirate just out of they don't wish to buy the game or they wish to spend their money on something else which is it yeah. i suppose you could say that it's wrong with great facility but ubi soft has taken the has taken a very extreme stance yeah, and also, you know, you can't really, because there's people that had no intentions of buying The Witcher 2 at all. And they pirated because, you know, well, I'm not gonna, you know, use 60 American dollars or, you know, 500, 600 Norwegian kroners to buy a game, which I don't really have any interest in. I'm just gonna download it, just, you know, I'm bored, I want to, if I want to play something. And of course that you can come into you know but of course that yeah, that uh, comes into the no the faction it is stealing so to say even though it's not you know physical copies or whatever but it's still stealing in the sense so yes. yeah but at least well actually the first time i actually talked about pirating on this show but we're not gonna go into that uh, today we can do that in a forum frenzy some other time so we uh, actually want to get done today uh do you know how long we've been talking like no you do not know how long okay well let's keep on going uh do you want to talk a little bit uh, about the mass effect 3 dlc yes well i'm i'm a very i'm an avid mass effect fan in general i've been playing the series for years and i've replayed all of the single player games far more than i should and mass effect 3 the the latest iteration of the series and the closing of commander shepard's story um, there's a lot of multiplayer DLC, which is which is for free, free, completely free of charge, and they release this every so often. Uh, and there was also the extended cut, which, um, let's say it made certain emendations to the ending, which a lot of fans, in, perhaps including myself, thought was slightly lackluster. Which, And I think they did a good job with the extended cut. However, this Tuesday on August 28th in, Amer in North America, and the 29th uh, Wednesday in Europe, certain parts of Europe, that is, we're receiving a new single-player DLC in which, uh, titled Leviathan, if you're into Mass Effect lore, then you'll remember from Mass Effect 1, there was the Leviathan of Dis, which is a large ship which the Batarians found in their space, and it disappeared. Rumor has it that it's a Reaper. Now Commander Shepard is tasked to find Leviathan, whatever it is, rescue a few people along the way, gain more insight along the Reapers, and all that wonderful stuff. It will be 800 Microsoft points. Damn. <laughs> okay, so you you actually gonna get it? Uh, yes, I already have Microsoft points saved up on my Origin account so that I can get it on Tuesday. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to play it much because Wednesday is when the university year starts for me. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't. I. You know, 
not Mass Effect 3. No, I'm done. I'm done. No more Mass Effect 3. We talked about enough about it when uh, back in the back in the, a couple of episodes ago. Not a couple, uh, ten episodes or something. Even more maybe. So yeah, um, anything more you want to add with Mass Effect 3? Um, no, but if I may, I'd like to make a plug for gaming staff on Total War Center. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, we recently received a new department of staff called Gaming Staff. It is led by Poach, who is an, an administrator and a very handsome man. Um, he is he is Scottish. spearheading... He Yes, he is Scottish, and he is uh, leading this vanguard of new members. And um, there are a bunch of gaming clans, as you mentioned before, in Battlefield 3. There's World of Tanks, Arma 2, there will be one for Arma 3. And there will be a lot of um, official Total War Center clan games, matches. It's mainly player versus player, so that is to say we have an official clan with people who put TWC in front of their name, and that they represent the forums in their online gaming. It's both a measure to perhaps branch out Total War Center to other games, although I can't really speak for that as I'm not a member of Hex or Poach. Poach could probably shed a lot more light on it. And it's also to increase members, well, fun. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, I'm not part of gaming stuff yet, but I'm actually trying to sneak my way in. <laughs> I have to find something useful for me to do. So actually, yeah, it's quite quite good. It's actually one of the, isn't it very new? It's like, how old is it now? It's a couple of weeks. Well, it's been under discussion for a sizable amount of time, although not as long as one might think, perhaps. But it has been in official existence for about two or three weeks when we... Well, not we. When gaming staff actually received a new name color, light light green, and, a, and an official badge to differentiate themselves, because they are, they are actual members of staff now. They're a new department. Hmm. Encroaching on our territory. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Indeed. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um. Actually, I'm gonna. Lay, I'm not gonna talk about the next news. To be honest, it's too. It's too down. It's just about the uh, depression and people losing their jobs. Actually, no, we're not gonna talk about that. So I'm gonna say it's quits for today. Okay. Later. Let's record a goodbye. Yeah, we record. We are recording. Yes, a special goodbye. Well, what did you have in mind? This is daily. It has been a pleasure. Things like that. Okay, okay. Well, everyone, it has certainly been a pleasure, as Lego just said. Uh, sorry about the late Warcast. Uh, we actually did one with video, which Remlap recorded on the lo on the eve of the first launch of the official you know, TWC Minecraft server, but sadly it did not work, and so me and Lego had to do a kind of rush forecast. Now, well, I wouldn't call it rush, but you know we had to do hasty. it today. Hasty, thank you, hasty. He's my uh, dictionary. Lego is my dictionary, which is good. I need a dictionary. Anyhow, I want to really thank you, Legio, for coming on. It's been real nice to, uh, that you took out of your morning, actually, to spend with me. Um, I'm going off now to make dinner. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yes, goodbye, listeners. Yes. And uh, stay safe and stay sane, somewhat, at least. Well, most of you are insane, but like me, yeah, goodbye.